All right, we're back on the Paradigm, Samba Models Pike Paradigm, and I'm going to start working on the boom here, getting the servos installed, and they go right here. Push rods are installed already from Samba, and we're going to be using two of these guys right here, which are KST A15 1812s. Some specs for you. Tons of torque. Tons and tons of torque. Probably overkill, honestly. But anyway, let's zoom in a bit here. So these servos are going to get mounted in like this. So I think the first thing we're going to do is try to mark up the fuselage to see where these guys. Uh, We'll go, and then we'll have to use the Dremel and remove the material. Uh, we do have a little bit of leeway in these push rods, so I might keep these two servos like touching each other, centered in the in the fuselage. So put some masking tape in the bottom of the servo bay area and I kind of held the servos in and tried my best to mark around them and then use the exacto to peel that area out and the next thing to do is just use the Dremel and start chipping away at this uh, area and removing this big square rectangular piece Okay, so servos are in, or I, I managed to um, cut the hole out, a little bit of sanding and filing to clean it up, a little bit of test fitting, but anyway, those are, those are in there now, and um, I'm just going to go ahead and use the screws that came with the KST servos to install them. I kind of want to use the grommets, but eh. I don't want any give in the system, so we probably won't use the grommets because I do have a little bit of wiggle back and forth. Um, if I didn't have any wiggle back and forth, I'd probably use the grommets. But anyway, no grommets. All right, let's drill some holes and put the screws in. Let me show you what's next here. We have the clevises and the couplers assembled and the clevis is like centered on that coupler so we have room for adjustment servos are there installed screwed in and then the tail is on and I have some tape holding things centered and the linkages the rudder linkage and the elevator linkage obviously is hooked up so basically we're gonna have to mark our push rods here where we want to cut them that's a pretty straightforward task okay so I'm just gonna hook up or hold these clevises with these hemostats or whatever you want to call them and I'm just gonna hold this just directly in line with these output shafts so the the hole or the pin for the clevis here will be in line 
with the out the center of the output shafts. And then what you want to do is I have a silver sharpie here. Just mark the push rod where you need to make the cut. And we're going to do that on both And that's it. And then we're going to cut those carbon rods down to size with the Dremel. I've cut these push rods down. I know it's hard for you to see. You can barely see the end there. Easier to disconnect at the tail and then pull them through a little bit and you can make your cut with a rotary tool, Dremel tool. And I've sanded the ends of the push rods. So if this was the push rod, I've, I've sanded a little bit of the end and filed some notches in it just to help adhesion. And then these are the couplers. And you can see I've tapered the ends and also ground some notches in there and I put a slot. And you know, these notches came with my kit and they were too tight to go over the push rod. Um, you could sand the end of the push rod, but I elected just to open it up a little bit with a 1.5 millimeter drill bit um, and that seemed to work fine or just get new couplers you know there's all different size couplers you can get but these came with the kit so that's it uh, we're gonna mix up some epoxy and get the the uh, couplers attached and I'm also while I'm doing that I'm gonna go ahead and cut out the recess here for the multiplex connector so since we have a little bit of epoxy mixed up we'll go ahead and glue this in Okay, this is cut out here for the wiring harness. And I'm gonna go ahead and kind of scuff up the back of this as well to get good adhesion. And I also have scuffed up all around here. Just trying to get good mechanical adhesion with the, uh, the glue we're gonna use, the epoxy. So make sure you do open up this hole, scuff around wherever the connector is going to touch clean everything with alcohol and also roughen this up too and clean it off with alcohol I got the epoxy on the couplers they're installed and I have just these bits of foam shoved in here just to keep the push rods bent in a little bit so that the epoxy on the couplers doesn't touch the fuselage or glue itself to the fuselage and then the connectors also got epoxy behind it and that's in place and this masking tape is just holding everything down so we're gonna let this fully cure probably for a day or so and then we're gonna make uh, the horns up here to get the uh, rudder and elevator working alright so the epoxy is fully cured on our clevis coupler push rod coupler things and our multiplex connector next thing we're gonna do is move on to getting some horns prepared and for the rudder, I'm going to try this square horn, and I'm going to use the first horn there. Um, that's a shorter distance than just this horn with the first hole. So the rudder, you really don't need a lot of uh, distance on the horn, so we'll try this guy. And the elevator, I'm going to try this guy on the first position, so I'm going to cut and prep these horns. Okay, here's the rudder horn, that really short horn, and uh, you notice that I've uh, ground some of the clevis away as well, so that when we go that direction we get as much travel as we can without binding up on the clevis. And I might do that to the elevator too, but not to the same extent. Alright, basically done with the servos. That's what the linkage looks like. Definitely getting plenty of uh, rudder travel with the very short horn. Um, the elevator possibly could go a little bit longer, but I think we'll be fine. Won't really know till I uh, fly the model. Definitely 100% flyable with this configuration. Um, so yeah, the only other thing to do on this boom is to look at the rudder linkage a little bit. I got some rubbing back there and I gotta sort that out. 
All right, did a little bit of work on the L bend um, for the rudder. I needed to get this L bend to sit uh, tighter on the horn, so I filed, or not filed, but I used a cutoff tool here and kind of notched out that radius that it makes when you bend the wire just so they can slip down a little more. And I just used a um, cutoff wheel on the Dremel. And then. For the rudder, I had to open up that this opening a little bit, so on this top side, right where my fingernail is, a little bit of filing with the Dremel and a file or grinding, just to get a little more clearance in this area. So if you build this and you have some rubbing, you might need to massage these areas. Right, here's what the um, L bend looks like. In the back here. The camera will focus. I guess it won't, but you get the point. Right, well, I think that's going to wrap up this video. How to assemble the boom, get the servos in, get the, the tail working. Um, we'll do another video installing the equipment. I think the receiver goes back here. Then we have a tray to install here and all the GPS equipment motor, obviously the battery, speed control, all that fun stuff. But for now, we're going to wrap this one up. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.